This review contains spoilers. View at your own risk. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden, and this is my review of Captain America Civil War. So wow, it took me a while to get around to seeing this, but boy am I glad that I did. Civil War was, on the whole, a great movie. It has a lot of classic comic book style action, dialogue, and fun, while also taking the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe in a slightly darker and more thoughtful direction. That being said, some of it does feel forced, and the tone of the movie is a bit inconsistent and heavy-handed. Civil War also seems unusually preoccupied over the issue of collateral damage, as if such a thing never happened in the line of duty. But the movie holds it all together, has a lot of ambition, and manages to do a lot with a huge cast and a ton of moving parts. The key to this being that the heavy-handed nature of this movie, with a focus on the cost of lives, is to better justify the reason the Avengers are actually resorting to fighting one another. In a lot of ways, this added drama is the movie's weak point. Part of the reason why I like this entire run of Avengers films so far is that it largely focuses on heroes being heroes, saving lives, making quips, and doing cool stuff. Taking that away, or at least taking a step back into reality, can be a bit jarring, especially with one foot still firmly planted in the sci-fi fantasy hybrid world of the comics. This sense of being off balance is expressed in Zemo himself, a man who lost his family during the events of Age of Ultron. That whole aspect of his backstory does feel a little bit forced sometimes in the added drama. It doesn't help that he's somehow able to manipulate over a hundred countries and an entire team of Avengers into inadvertently following his convoluted, crazy elaborate plan, but it gives way to one of the best things about this movie in my opinion. Zemo's plan, crazy as it may be, actually works. Zemo what? Think about it. The man set out not to conquer, but only to destroy the Avengers, and he basically did. He tore that team right in half. His endgame was the climax of the film, and though he was captured, he got what he wanted. Tony and Cap were at each other's throats. Now sure, there is Cap's little message at the end of the movie, and that's good. It shows that the rift between the Avengers will be set aside when things really matter. But the damage is still done. These events are going to linger and will have an effect on things to come. In that way alone, this becomes a must-see if you are a fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Coupled with an actor who I felt added a lot to the role, Zemo really worked for me as a villain. He was a little bit over the top in his backstory and ability to somehow know exactly what needed to be done and where to be in any given situation, but I thought he was unique in his design and as an antagonist. Few other villains out there are going to aim for just screwing over the heroes personally, and that made him a very interesting threat. I'm not going to pretend that this movie was perfect. In addition to the problems I've mentioned, Civil War drags on a little because of all the stuff it is trying to do, while the added sense of darkness makes this whole movie's tone and pacing a little inconsistent. But its flaws are easily outweighed by what works, and I think part of the way it does this is by largely subverting its own premise. As much as Civil War postures itself about being all about politics and bureaucracy, that's not really what's going on here. And as we find out through the movie, what really divides the Avengers is not a political issue, but rather some pretty intimate personal ones. Which is what this movie is really all about. Family. Both Cap's and Tony's parents are touched on, as are several other families, including Zemo's, T'Challa's, and several other characters big and small. But at its core, this story is about the Avengers as a family and what happens when a rift is formed in this group. Highlights of the film include Black Panther, whose appearance here sets a lot of the groundwork and wisely gets a lot of T'Challa's backstory out of the way instead of waiting for his own movie. Yet the Black Panther's role is closely intertwined with the main plot of Civil War and doesn't feel forced or unnatural. I also like the action, which is well shot and has all sorts of really cool moments throughout the film. Seriously, seeing all these different heroes and their powers interacting with one another was a real treat, and was done with a lot of quality and care behind it. Oh, and every second Ant-Man was on screen was awesome. Seriously, Ant-Man was a great movie, but how great was Arden. he- Huh? What's that? Somebody there? Somebody. Who said that? Don't play innocent with me. You've known all along. Where are you? Follow the cold shiver down your spine. I'm right here. What do you want? To say what you won't. To do what you can. To remove those in your way. Dawn of Justice. <gasps> you ruined it. You killed the shareholders. We killed them. Remember your little accident in the laboratory? The performance enhancers. Bingo! Me, your greatest creation! Bringing you what you always wanted. What? What do I want? We can destroy them! Betrayal must not be countenanced! The world must be educated! What do I do? Instruct them in the matters of loss and pain! Make them suffer! Make them wish they were dead! 
Yes! And then grant them their wish. But how? The cunning warrior strikes neither body nor mind. Tell me how! The heart, Osborne. First we attack their heart. The heart? Yes, the heart of every true comic book fan. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man! Oh, is that what this is about? Spider-Man is great. What, really? Yeah, like, he's on the level of Sam Raimi Spider-Man at his best. Like, he's got a lot of great action, he has a lot of fun little, uh, Spider-Man, Peter Parker roles. Tom Holland just does a great job as Peter Parker on the whole. And I really like the dynamic with him and Aunt May with, uh, Marissa Tomei. Overall, it was really awesome, and I can't wait for Spider-Man Homecoming. Oh, uh, I see. What? No, 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 it's nothing. I, I just had this whole thing, like, like I was the Green Goblin from the first Spider-Man movie in 2002. Yeah, I know. Jeez. 2002 was 14 years ago. We're getting old. Maybe you are. I was manufactured in Taiwan two years ago. Uh, okay, so I guess that's the review. Yeah, a bit anticlimactic, though. What do you want to do now? Oh, I think we both know the answer to that. <laughs> and God bless little Peter and his dear Mary Jane and deliver us from <laughs> oh! Finish it! Finish it! Oh, deliver <laughs> us! <laughs> Your baby oh, Jesus no, can't no. help you now. Oh, ah, 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 oh, Spider-Man. <laughs>